Well, we've come to the offices of Seven Investment Management to chat with Justin urcott stewart Justin is a well-respected commentator on the on the credit crunch, and we see him uh, almost every day on the television talking about the current crisis and his trademark red braces. But Justin also runs his own uh, financial company as well, and so we've come to uh, find out from him what his take is of the reasons for this crisis. In as simple a terms for people as possible, just give us an understanding of what you understand really the reasons for the, for the crisis that's hitting us at the moment. Well, first of all, they're quite right to be confused because some of the greatest brains in the world haven't actually worked out precisely what has been going on and what's why it's gone on. But if you actually want a key element to actually really what has occurred here, really two things. First of all, it's an economic cycle but an economic cycle compounded by a failure of the financial systems. And what's happened here is really a mixture of two types of banking. Remember the old-fashioned style of utility banking run by Captain Mannering almost, used to do the domestic banking? And then on the other side, you had the sort of merchant bankers, adventure bankers, those people who were involved in all sorts of probably high-risk areas. Well, somewhere along the line, we managed to merge those two together and create, well, out of two inert substances like uh, nitro and glycerine, something which is really rather dangerous, I and mean, we can now see the result of it. What you've therefore seen is banking excesses without proper control. And if you want a level, le label for that, probably down to greed, somewhere along the line. Nothing to do with necessarily in terms of actions from the almighty, but much more to do with actions from humans, but getting beyond their own controls and getting beyond their regulators and getting far too greedy. Just in terms of where you would put culpability, where you put blame, who really are the key players in, in your view of, of, of the causes of the crisis? Well, you're right, you can almost refer to it as a muck spreader. It's just about everybody's involved to some form or another. But you can actually tie it down to a few key areas. First of all, necessarily investment bankers who were being too greedy, but regulators who didn't understand what they were doing, politicians who didn't understand the risk and probably got too close to the bankers as well. But equally, those people involved in uh, taking loans out as well, taking, getting those loans, spending too much money, building up too much debt. Few of us were complaining at the time about low interest rates and actually having our house going up too much in price. And yet all of those things have added to it. But that's at a much lower level than actually those people who were taking on higher levels of risk and not realising the impact of what would happen if it went wrong. Those awful phrases, it's different this time. No, it's not. It's a disaster. Why did so few people actually see this coming? As you say, only a very few people. Those who are willing to actually cast the runes and have a look at the facts as to what was going on, the level of debt that was, that was appearing. No, there's one key area that we actually identify here. It's really that the emperor is somewhat sartorially challenged. Who's going to turn around and put the, put the hand up first of all and say, actually, this is wrong and others take notice of it? One or two people did put their hands up, but no one wanted to know. So many people are saying we've got to avoid this ever happening again. What are the key lessons that we can take uh, from, from this particular crisis? Well, first of all, we will end up, of course, having a regulatory system that will be perfectly designed to ensure that we can manage the last crisis, not the next crisis. The next one will be different. We don't know what it's going to be. There are basic elements to try and make sure run banking and investment properly. And that is not just make as much money as you can, but manage risk as best as possible. If you've got management of risk, people can understand, therefore, what the bottom side is. How far down could this go? There's some old lines that we used to use in the city that often get forgotten these days, such as, remember, it's their money, not yours. And also, it's a privilege to be asked to run people's money, not a right. And therefore, you take a different view of people's money, as opposed to just trying to actually gamble it. You're investing it by way of process, structure and discipline. And that's how you go about it. Tick box regulation won't solve the issue, I'm afraid. But good old fashioned supervising of banking and uh, investments is the way you actually try and develop this in the longer term.